So what I'm saying, the water electrolytes, acid-base balance, and uric acid production, especially. So you are maintaining the once again by producing the urine. So now let's talk about the if the urine stops to work. So what will be happen? So the water will be overloaded in your body. We call the fluid overload. Next to the potassium will be aerob means the potassium will be increased in your body, and H plus will be aerob means the acidosis will happen, and third talk is the urea level will be increased. So now let's talk the first talk is once again a fluid overload in the form of with the dependent edema, with the leg edema, yes. Next is the ascites, can be the sectal edema, can be any of the part of your body, wherever it, it gets access, enter into the different parts of the body, it can access. So it can cause the NSR. So next talk is once again the potassium can be raised, H plus can be raised, can cause the acidosis, and also urea also can raise and cause sometimes. Yes, it goes to the different cells and causing irritations of the itching and even GI tract can cause the nausea, vomiting, and also sometimes balance. There are a long list of features they can go. But my view, what I'm saying is very much important the red plants. Fluid overload in different parts of the body, no problem. But the most dangerous thing is the salmonid edema. So you must know about it. So this is dangerous. So once again, the potassium is increased. That doesn't problem. It goes up more than 5.5 or maybe whatever. But it gets more than seven is dangerous. So rule of seven once again. So once again the H plus gets up. So acidosis, it doesn't problem. So once again it gets pH level. Rule of seven once again less than seven is dangerous. It's a light incompatible sometimes. And next talk is the urea level gets up and causing different symptoms all over the body. No problem, but it causes the brain and heart is dangerous. So brain means uremic encephalopathy and heart is uremic pericarditis. So these are dangerous. So once again, why never you get the pulmonary edema studying for the fluid of the the danger talk and also potassium get more than 7 and once again a pH less than 7 and once again uremic pericarditis and uremic encephalopathy these are the danger. Sometimes I'm saying all the P's, hormone edema, potassium, once again pH less than 7, rule of 7 and next is the pericarditis. These four important toxins, once again you need to know, you need to do the acute renal replacement talk. 
and reality based therapy, whatever you have in your hands, so you can do whatever the forms. Yes, the hemodialysis. So this is talking about the acute kidney injury. So leads to yes, needs the acute renal replacement therapy in the form of acute HD while we get this PPP as I say. But my dear, what is my aim actually to talk on this uh, present lady? Uh, mm -hmm. I've come up with some of the features today, and she had been in the hospital with some of the medics. So now let's talk some some of the talk of the chronic kidney functions. Means the long term kidney function, the two important functions that we need to know. Number one is the EPO production in electrophoresis, can cause anywhere, and the most important part is the long static chronic anemia. And second important function next is the that there is the vitamin D activation. It's a very complex part. Yes, uh, you may have some of the other lectures so that you can learn very, very well about this vitamin D and also calcium metabolism all in together. Very complex part. So you don't need to know, you just need to know some of the bone problems. We call it renal positive dystrophy all in together. So my two is once again, the chronic kidney is a long term. If the kidney is not functioning, means we call the chronic kidney disease, the most important things at bedside critically will get the anemia. So whenever the chronic kidney is damaging, so definitely the acute functions also can be interrupted. So yes, once again, the other things that like the freedom of the potassium around, H plus around, and also uremic features, all them together will be found in chronic kidney disease as well. So what I'm saying is one of the important talks, yes, once again, from the chronic kidney function and damaging, you'll get the anemia, and at the best side, the fluid overload in the form of leg edema, maybe the ascites, fluid of edema, whatever. So if you get the best side, at least the leg edema, along with the anemia, so diagnose the best side done, there is a chronic kidney disease, very simple. Clear? So next talk, I'm saying, I'd like to show one of the important things, right? Can I, can I come close? So she has a one catheter in the neck. So we call it the tunnel catheter. And this tunnel catheter is given for the temporary hemodialysis. What I'm saying? The temporary hemodialysis. And next, can you just come close? Yeah. So, my so this is actually the AB fistula. Yes, we can palpate the AB fistula, something like that. So we are filling the brewing and also with the stethoscope, with the bell of the stethoscope, bell brewing, yes. We can listen the push, 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 the sound all together as the bruits. So what I'm saying, this AV fistula, this is inactive but functioning. This is inactive but functioning AV fistula, the left forearm, along with the tunneled catheter in the neck. What does it mean? The tunnel catheter is now active. It does mean the patient is taking the hemodialysis through this tunnel catheter at this point, not on the AV fistula. So I know what I'm saying, the talk is that while the person is having the evidences at best time, any AV fistula or with the tunnel catheter, it does mean the diagnosis chance to end stage renal disease rather than chronic kidney disease. So what I'm saying, you can start with the presentation of this young patient or right, elderly patient lady, having such, right, the diagnosis that end stage renal disease, evidenced by renal replacement therapy in the form of tunnel catheter in the neck, and also inactive, but yes, functioning every pistol in the left forearm. So diagnosis is done, the answer is done today, number one. Mm -hmm. And second important talk, whether this renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis or the AV fistula is functioning whether or not. Second talk, whenever you diagnose your the answer is done, then you need to talk that the functioning whether or not. So once again, if it is functioning whether or not, it does give the idea, you see, there is no leg edema at this moment. No leg edema, absolutely absent. So no leg edema in give the idea, yes, the renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis is working very, very well. So the second target functioning well or not, simple, at the best side. And sometimes some of the complications of the chronic kidney disease that as you learned, the anemia is still absent or present that you can see. This can you come close here. So she is mildly anemic, mildly anemic. So yes, at the best side you can you can get the number third one, some of the complications of the chronic kidney disease still presents or not. Sometimes you can get even absent anemia. It does mean the patient is on treatment of EPO therapy, so sometimes you are not getting the anemia as well. So what I'm saying is the number one point of diagnosis it can be sickly or it can be ESRD because of the evidence of the RRT in the form of yes, the hemodialysis in the form of tunnel catheter or maybe the infistor. Second important talk is the functioning well or not. Only the absence of edema, 
and third talk yes any of the complications the previous complications like anemia is present somewhere and fourth just last but not the least the underlying etiology if you just say that the underlying etiology in total world statistics the most common cause of west in the the first cause is the diabetes blindness so my dear at the best side we can say this diabetes blindness what we are looking for the diabetes we are looking for mahap you see that we are looking for the fingertip spin rate you see the fingertip spin rate very close come close come close more close so fingertip spin rate is the diagnostic point of the best sign is the diabetes blindness you don't need anything else the best sign you can say yes the most likely diagnosis the diabetes so yes it's just like a jadoo right something like this so yes so you start with the diagnosis of my clinical diagnosis and stage around this evidence by tunnel feather at the neck which is active and there is an inactive but functioning AV fistula evidence by AV fistula on the left forearm once again evidence by palpable bruise and also the bruise as well onto the uh, stethoscope and also second important point the functioning very well absence of any evidence by abscess of edema and third talk there is a mildly anemic with the complications of the previous chronic kidney disease and fourth important talk that yes underlying etiology once again the diabetes managers bedside Yes, the finger tips pin to the middle finger is the first evidence that you need to look for. And other evidence that we can look for some of the bedside insulin syringes, bedside glucometer. Yes, the bedside you can do the urine dipstick, and also you can do the ophthalmoscope to do look into the diabetic retinal body. So these are the four important evidences at the bedside you must look for whether this patient having the diabetes is the most important. Evidence. Second, the diabetes my dear is the hypertension is the next cause. So once again, the hypertension. Yes, you can measure the hypertension, but at the bedside, you can get the normal because the patient may be on the treatment. So what is the bedside test? You can say yes, there is a case of hypertension. This is underlying etiology, diabetic, means an aphrodite, means a chronic kidney disease, renal disease. So what is that? The single bedside test, my dear. You just hands and just examine the precordia and get the apex bit, which is once again slightly displaced and heaving in nature. Heaving means hypertrophy. Is once again the bedside diagnostic test. But the hypertension evidence is the target organ damage. So at the base, you can say the diagnosis of hypertension is the underlying etiology of the chronic kidney disease or instant renal disease. And second to the hypertension, the last is the glomerular disease. Here's a long list of glomerular disease, my dear. Among them, the single bedside, the one glomerular disease we can diagnose. Just look at the patient. Is the facial lipodystrophy, like the English face? Yes, the facial lipodystrophy means that all the facial fats will be lost. The single diagnosis at the base side we can do. By the glomerular disease, just look at the patient's face. What is that? This is the facial lipo hypertrophy or facial lipo dystrophy. So means the facial fats will be lost. So diagnosis, yes, this is called the once again we called it MCGN type two. MCGN type two. We can say without having the biopsy. So the best side we can make a diagnosis. And next to the third disease, the other disease like that also a dominant polycystic kidney disease. So you can examine the patient at dominant. We can get the big, big size kidneys, palatable, palatable kidneys at both sides. So you can make a diagnosis either A difficulty is the at the box. Sometimes you get some of the scar marks, nephrectomy scar in case of A difficulty as well. And it, these are the most common, basically the diabetic, uh, sorry, the end stage renal disease. Uh, patient needs the renal replacement therapy. So I hope that my dear, the summary talk that I like to talk. Yes, starting with the diagnosis at their side, once again the ESRD. Evidence of renal replacement therapy. Second important talk: the absence of edema means the functioning, functioning. Well, or not. And third talk: the any of the complications of second is the anemia. And fourth important talk: here is once again the underlying etiology to look into that. Please, the diabetes, the fingertips pain. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you very much.